Hello everyone, this uh, YouTube video is going to show you how to calculate the work done by a constant force. So we have this object over here on a flat surface that is being pulled by this force here that makes an angle theta with a horizontal from point A to point B. This surface is a rough surface, so therefore there is a force of friction over there parallel to the surface in the opposite direction of the motion. Now the displacement, if you remember how to draw a displacement vector, connect the beginning of the motion with the end of the motion, put the arrow on the end, in, in this case connect A and B, put the arrow on B, that's going to give you the displacement of this object from A to B. So now in this specific problem with these two forces that we see, we have a constant force F in green in the first quadrant over that makes an angle theta with the horizontal and we also have a constant force Fk that is uh, in the opposite direction of motion parallel to the surface. So first let's go ahead and calculate the work done by the force F. According to the definition of the work done by a constant force, this is going to have to be the cross product between the force vector and the displacement vector. Now we know that this is going to be the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the displacement and the force, in this case, is theta. Uh, for the force of friction, on the other hand, we are going to calculate the work done by the force of friction in the similar way. The dot product of the force of friction multiplied by the displacement of the object. Uh, and if we move on from here to the next part of this calculation, we are going to have the work done by the force of friction equals the magnitude of the force of friction times the magnitude of the displacement times cosine of the angle between the displacement and the force of friction. So displacement is to the right over here, horizontal. Force of friction is to the left, horizontal. The angle between them is obviously 180 degrees. Now we know that cosine 180 is negative 1, so the work done by the force of friction is going to be the magnitude of the force of friction times the magnitude of the displacement times negative 1. Uh, force of friction in magnitude equals the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And the normal force, we don't have it on the diagram just yet, so we are going now to draw the normal force over here. If you remember, the normal force is the force that is perpendicular to the plane, vertically upwards here, label it little n. We'll also now draw the force of gravity. Which is vertically downwards. And we're also going to resolve the force F here in the two components. The horizontal and the vertical component. We have one component here and another one over here. This one is F cosine theta and this one is F sine theta. Now we're going to do a magnitude check very fast. These forces on the y-axis must balance out, so therefore the mg force, which is 10.5 centimeters should be equal to the n force plus f sine theta force in magnitude. Well, that's a 4.5 plus a 3, that's 7.5. So we're going to have to shorten this from 10.5 to 7.5. Let's see. When we do that, there we go, 7.5. That's going to be our mg. So now that we know that these forces are balanced, you can, we can move on to calculating the normal force so we can plug it in here. So we are going to take the positive direction upward there and we are going to say 
that the sum of forces on the y, which are three forces, one, two, and three, will have to be equal to zero. All the three forces are positive n, positive f sine theta, and negative mg. And that should be equal to zero. When we simplify this, we are going to end up with n plus f sine theta minus mg equals zero, which gives us an n equal mg minus f sine theta. Now we can take the n from here, plug it in here, and that's going to give us a mu k times, open parenthesis, mg minus f sine theta, close parenthesis, that's going to be our force of friction in magnitude, multiply that by the displacement in magnitude, and by negative 1 gives us the work done by the force of friction equals negative, from this negative 1, mu k mg minus f sine theta times d. So then we can circle this one here. That's the work done by the force f. And we can circle this one here. That is the work done by the force fk, the force of friction. Now the net, the net work is going to be the sum of these two. So work net equals work done by the force f plus the work done by the force of friction, which means f d cosine theta minus mu k mg minus f sine theta, close parenthesis, times d. Circle that, and that is going to be our final answer for this problem. So once again, we calculated the work done by a constant force, and we did that by calculating first the work done by the force F in green. That makes an angle theta with the x-axis. We got F d cosine theta. Then we calculated the work done by the force of friction, which is in purple here in the opposite direction of motion along the surface. We did that by taking the dot product of fk and d, but then we remembered that this fk is in fact mu k times n. We calculated the n from the balance of forces along the y-axis using plus to be upward, and then we plugged it back in here. We remember that cosine 180 is negative 1, and it's 180 degree angle between d and fk. And when we added up the two expressions, we ended up with this expression for the work net uh, in this specific problem.